In this video, we're going to have a look at model-driven apps in the Power Platform. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. So previously in this series, we were looking at Canvas apps. So this was an example of a Canvas app, and I've got this accounts table, and I can edit it and add new entries if I want to do so. So if you haven't seen that video, there's a link to it up above. Now, the thing about Canvas apps is it allows me to have what's called pixel perfect placement. So I can have things exactly where I want. If I don't want it just there, I can just move it a little to the side. I can use lots of formulas to say exactly what I want to do. I can get it exactly as I want. So why would you want anything else? Well, maybe you want something that has its own style. So not one that you do, but one that the Power Platform does. So it's an interface that people are used to. Also one that they can customize. So giving the power back to the end user. So in that previous video, I talked about the Dataverse. So the Dataverse is a database which is built in to the Power Apps platform. So if I look for instance in the accounts table, you can see that we will have all of these columns. So you can see 142 of them. And I've got some sample data in there. What Model Driven Apps does is it allows you to create forms and views and charts and dashboards based on the Dataverse itself, and then just package it all together into an app. And then the end user can do things like add additional columns or hide columns or filter. Now, this functionality is the same in things like Dynamics 365. So if you get used to one platform, then you know how to use as an end user the other platform. So how do you create a model driven app? Well, first of all, you create the data experiences, the forms, the views, the charts, the dashboards. So let's just have a quick look at these. So we have got views, and as you can see, when you create this sample data, you get an awful lot of views and forms, etc. So I'm going to have a look at the all accounts public view. So it will just take a few seconds to load, and here it is. So you can see we have got these columns already set up. If I want an additional column, say I wanted their country region, then I can drag it in, or I can just click the plus arrow here and add it in. So I will add in, say, the county. But you can see the county is completely blank, so I don't want that. So I'm going to remove that. You can also sort and you can also filter. In other words, remove the rows which are there. So maybe I wanted to filter just where the country region is equal to the United States, for example. But I won't do that. I want to see everything that's there. So I'm going to save and publish this. So I have made the one alteration, the addition of a new column. So now when anything uses this view, it will have this as the default. But as I say, the end user could then alter it. So that's a view. A view is for looking at multiple rows of data. Now, in contrast to this, a form is based on just one row of data. So if I click on forms here, and you can see we've got various types of forms. So I'm going to use the main account form. So when this loads, you will see for this one row of data, we have much more in terms of the number of columns which are being shown. So here we've got account name, phone, fax, website, address, and various other things. Timeline could include activities such as emails, faxes, letters, appointments, tasks, and so forth. So again, if I want to expand this, say I wanted the account number to be added, then again, it's just a simple drag and drop. Now, there are much more things we can do with this when we get deeper. We can add components. So these are fields whose properties you actually control through programming. So they can be highly graphical, for instance, using a library called React. So I'm going to publish this. So publishing makes it available to everybody. And then 
I'm going to then go back. Now the next thing to have a look at are charts. So charts are graphs basically. So if I was to look at accounts by industry, this takes me into what's called the classic experience. So it is a more old fashioned way to create these things. So you can see much different from the modern interface. So you can have column, bar, area, line, pie, funnel, tag, and donut charts. So donut charts are like pie charts with a hole in the center. And then finally, we have got dashboards. So what dashboards allow you to do is to combine charts and other things into one screen. Again, at the moment, this uses the classic experience for creating them. So I can have a chart in here, for instance. So I click on it and then I select the chart name. I have a second one here and have a stream down there. Now, the good news is that when you create a table, you automatically get some charts and views and forms. So you don't have to worry about this at the beginning. You can just create your model driven app and then adjust the forms and views and charts when necessary. So let's create it. So we'll go into create and I'm going to create a blank app and it's a blank app based on Dataverse. So this is a big difference between the Dataverse model driven apps and the Canvas apps. The Canvas apps, you can use several hundred different connectors. So you can connect data from Twitter, from Facebook, for instance. With the model driven app, it has to be based on the Dataverse. So this is going to be my accounts model driven app. Let's click create. And it's now asking me, okay, I need a page to start with. So let's click add page and I'm going to use a Dataverse table. So this gives you a view and a form. So let's click next. And I'm going to use the accounts table. And there it is. So you can see in this preview that I've got the accounts table. I can click on it. I can get to my form. So I go from view to form and I can create new as well. Now I can add additional views and forms. I can add dashboards and I can add custom pages. So what this is, is a canvas page. So I can incorporate a canvas screen into my model driven app. So I'm just going to add another view and form, and this is going to be the contact view and form. So I've got something to swap in between. Now there's a lot more detail that we can get into. So I can add, for instance, a button at the bottom that will give me an entirely new list of items here. But for now, what I'm going to do is just save and publish this. So I clicked on play because I want to actually be able to use it. So now you can see here is my accounts model driven app. So at the moment, I can't see anything. It's looking at my active accounts. So I'm going to change that to all accounts. So here we can see all accounts with my additional column that I have set up. But I'm going to add a column as a user. So I'm going to click on edit columns and I'm going to add the shipping method. So we can see now the shipping method column has been added, except of course it's blank. So that's not really useful. So I will now remove it. So I can do things as the end user. I can show charts. So here we have a chart by industry or a chart by owner or new accounts by month. I can click on any of these items and go into the form. So you can see I have a form call overdue and then one that is closed with regards to this particular account. Or I can create a new account. Lots more that I can do. So you'll see that I'm able to visualize this view. So I am able to put this into Power BI, which we looked at in the previous video. So you can see it is generating a report for me. So while I can select the fields, it has gone, okay, this might be interest to you. And then I can save it and use it later. So model driven apps, they are based on the Dataverse and they're very easy to set up. All you do is add a page and you can say, I want it to be based on this particular table. Now you might be going, okay, this is great, but I want to learn more. How can I do that? 
Well, my recommendation is that you have a look at the official Microsoft exams PL900 and PL100. So the 900 set of exams are for foundations. So the fundamentals level. So they allow you to learn what is possible. The 100 series, in this case, Power Platform App Maker, allows you to actually get the knowledge to do it. So if you want to know more about what's available under each of these, then have a look at the study guide. So if you have a look at the study guide for the PL100, for instance, we will see if we scroll down to model driven apps, you will be creating model driven apps, forms, views, dashboards, and sharing them with other users and groups. Similarly for the 900, so this is learning what is available, then you will learn about model driven apps and be able to create a very simplistic version, similar to what we've just done here. So once you have a certain, okay, this particular exam gives me what I need, how do I learn it? Then you can use several different sources. So if you want to use sources which are available in this web page, and just scroll down and you will see that there is a learning path for the PL900 containing lots of different modules, and you can go through those. Alternatively, you might find other methods to learn about the PL900 or the PL100. So in this video, we've had a quick look at how to use model-driven apps. So they are based on the Dataverse, they are easy to set up, and then they allow the user flexibility in what they see. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then click on the like, and then why not click subscribe and that bell? That way you'll be notified of any new videos. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thank you very much for watching and keep learning.